Hi, this is David. Today we're talking about Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based integration tool. It's designed to get data out of one system, manipulate in some way, and get it into another system. We call this process Extract, Transform, and Load. It's very similar to SQL Server Integration Services, or SSIS, which came free with Microsoft SQL Server, and it, uh, except that SSIS is designed to run on-premises, on your local servers, on your local machines, your local network, whereas Azure Data Factory is all cloud-based. In this example, I'm going to pull data out of a common delimited text file, which is stored in Azure Blob Storage, and I'm going to push it into a table in Azure SQL Database. I've already set up a few things ahead of time. I have, for example, a storage account here. And in my storage account, I have blob storage. And I have a container here called imports. And I'll upload a file. In fact, I'll show you that file right here. It's called customers.txt, and it's just four rows. Each row has four columns, a uh, first name, last name, city, and state. You can see that the columns are delimited by commas. The rows are delimited by carriage returns and line feeds. And we have Bill, Steve, Satya, and me, which I think is pretty appropriate. So I will upload that into this blob storage container right here. And there it is. And now I want to go back and show you I also have an Azure SQL database. My server is called DGTest ADF SQL. That's Azure Data Factory SQL. And on that, I've got one database called DGTest ADF DB. And that's right here. And I set up a, I created a table in that that I called customers. And I can see that you can get to these through any SQL tool or any database tool. SQL Server Integration Services is great, or I'm sorry, SQL Server Management Studio is great. Um, this is, I just happen to be using Visual Studio's SQL Server Object Explorer for this. And you can see there's the schema. It's first name, last name, city, state. I, I just matched the same schema that I, I have in the text file. I didn't need to do that because I can transform them if I want to. But if you wanted to create this yourself, there's the code for doing that. And if I come over here, you can see that there is no data in here. I'll refresh that. But there are columns in here, but there are zero rows of data. It's completely empty. I just created it a few minutes ago. So I'll go back to Azure here, and then I want to create a new Azure Data Factory to move data from here into here. So I can do that. I can hit the Add right here or the Create Resource here and type in Data Factory here in the search box click on it. The very first one is the one I want, Data Factory. This is a description of what it does. This button here will launch the creation blade. Uh, so I have to give it a name. I'll call it DG Test ADF for Azure Data Factory. I want it in my subscription. I'm going to put it in the same resource group as my database and Azure Storage account are. I don't have to, but it makes it easier to manage things that way. I definitely want the latest version of it. Um, I don't, uh, the location is fine, East US. You just want to think about latency. If it's, It should be close to wherever your data that you're working with is, so you'll minimize that latency. So I clicked OK. It's going to go out. It takes maybe 30 seconds to create this thing, and when it's done, I'll have a message pop up over here saying go to resource. There we go. There's my data factory. And uh, I will quickly point out the quick start here. So if you want to learn more, dive deeper into it, here's all the documentation on learning more. Here are some tools that will help you. Here are some tutorials that will walk you through how to do this. But I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. I'll click on the overview tab here and select author and monitor. And that'll actually open up a new browser tab. And on here there's some options that I have along with some videos. I'm going to do the copy data. I just want to move data from one place to another. So I'll click copy data. I'll give it a name. I'll say uh, import new customers. How about that? My idea is that somebody will drop in this file in my blob container with all the new customers that we obtained that day and 
this integration will pick them up and push them into SQL Server. So I have here imported customers. I, I don't need a description here. I could put one in there. I could specify run on a regular schedule right here. Personally, I like to test it first before I do that, and I can change that later on. So I'll just run once for now and click Next. And then here's all the data sources that I don't yet have. So if I've been using this for a while, I could have multiple data sources. But right now I have to create some. And the first one I want to create is the source data source. Where am I getting my data from? So I click on Create Connection, and I know that I'm getting my data from Azure Blob Storage. And you can see there's connectors here for a whole bunch of different data sources in here. Now, actually, I can filter this by clicking Azure, because I know Azure Blob Storage is in Azure. And I do that, and I get a smaller list, a little bit easier to manage. There's Azure Blob Storage right there. Click on Continue, and then ask me some things of specific to this. I'll give it a name, Git Delimited file, that's fine. The really important part is down here where I say I want this subscription, I want this Azure storage account, and really I'll just test it, make sure it's all good. That's all I need. Click on finish, it'll go out and it'll create that new connection, and then I can use that as my source data store. There it is. Make sure it's selected, and I click next. Now it's asking me where in that Azure data in that blob storage do I want to get it. So it says file or folder. Uh, blob storage has a concept of containers, which, which are analogous to folders on a file system. So I'll click on Browse and select the import container. That's where I'm putting my all my delimited files. All these things aren't really relevant to what I'm doing, but they're options that you can set. I'll click Next here, and then it asks me, tell me about the file you're importing. Is it uh, what kind of is it a text file? Is it a, a JSON file, etc.? What it, it it guessed at things. It looked at the file itself and it, it figured out some of this stuff. It's a common delimited file. It's separated. Each line is separated by carriage return line feed. Uh, but I can change that if I want to. For example, if I had not commas, but if I delimited by semicolons, for example, I could do that. Um, here it is, and using this information, it's, it showed me a preview of the data in that file right here. There were no columns headings in here. If I go back and look at the file, there isn't a row that says first comma, last comma, city comma, state. That might be useful. In fact, these things that had to guess at what the column names actually mean, it just came up with, with uh, nonsense names, prop 0, prop 1, prop 2, prop 3. If I had them, I could have checked this. But I can change that in schema. I can say, you know, prop 1, prop 0 is really the first name, and prop 1 is really the last name, and prop 3 is really the city, and prop 4 is oh, it's called ST for state, like there. All right, that's I'm done with the source for now. Now it's asking me where is the destination data star? Where do I want? I want to copy data from where to where. It's asking me to where. Well, I know that I want to copy it to Azure SQL database. So I'll click on Azure right here and create a new connection. It shows me all the options for Azure. And one of them is right here, Azure SQL database. So I'll click continue here. And I'll say, you know, save to SQL. Um, and I could give it a description if I want to, but really what I want is down here. I want to say this subscription, this SQL Server, when it loads up, let's refresh that again. This database on that SQL Server, I'll use SQL Authentication. I've created a user called DGTestAdmin. That's the admin user for the SQL Server. The password is a super secret password. It's a P A S S W O R D. I hope I didn't say that out loud. And I should test that connection. Good. Connection successful. I've hit create, so it's creating it. And in a few seconds, I will see this. This, this connection show up here, and I'll be able to select it as my destination data store. There it is. Make sure it's selected, click Next, and I told it which database, but I didn't tell it which table. I only have one table here, but if I had multiple, that might be a big deal. I'll select the customer table. That's where I want to insert it. 
I click next and then it comes up with column mapping so I need to tell it that the, the I gave these things more realistic names so instead of saying prop 0 prop 1 prop 2 etc it says first last city ST and I can figure out what those are and map them to the first name column, last name column, city column, and state column. And it just did them in order here, but if they if it was wrong, I could change that right here. And I can even do some pre-copy scripts if I want to do a little bit of manipulation in here. I'll click Next right there, and then it asks me about uh, what happens if there are problems. Well, if there's an error, by default, it'll just abort the entire batch. It'll just stop right on the error and not go f forward. But I could say, you know, if there's a bad row, let's say I'm trying to put a... Uh, a number or a, a, a string into a number column or trying to squeeze something that's too large into a column that only fits 10 characters and I've got 20 characters that go into it then uh, that might cause a problem. Do I want to skip those rows or I want to log them if I skip them? In this case I'll just say uh, if there's a problem I want to just abort it right away. I want to know. And this is just a summary. It tells me what I've selected, gives me the chance to go back and change them. I feel pretty confident. So I'll click next. It'll deploy it out here and I can click finish right here and now this over here on the left side of this tab I see monitor. I click on monitor I can actually see what's going on. There's the job I just created. It's in progress right here. It was running for about six seconds and if I refresh this, I don't know if this auto refreshes or not, but um, it has succeeded and because it's succeeded I should be able now to go into SQL Server and see these three, four rows. So here's my SQL Server table. If I refresh this, I expect to see now these four rows here imported via Azure Data Factory. So in this demo, I showed you how to create an Azure Data Factory and use it to move data from one data source, in this case a common delimited file, stored in Azure Blob Storage into another data repository, in this case, a SQL, an Azure SQL database table. This is David. Thank you for watching.